Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In my previous tutorial, I covered the subpixel registration, image registration topic, but I thought this deserves another look because uh, there are many ways of actually performing image registration in Python. So I plan on actually covering three additional ones in addition to the one I already covered in the last topic. So let's uh, jump in. And the first two methods I'm going to show you are inspired by our friends from the astronomy community. And these are available under image underscore registration package. So go ahead and pip install image underscore registration. I'll show that in a second. And within this registration package, I'm going to use chi squared uh, shift and cross correlation shift for our uh, image correlation or registration. So let's jump into our spider IDE and again if you uh, would like to get this package go ahead and do pip install image underscore registration okay so then you'll have it uh, then you'll have it ready so once you have this package installed now let me just show you these two lines on how to uh, write your uh, registration I mean two lines of code for your registration and uh, but first we need to uh, we need to read the images so let's actually let me go ahead and copy these lines to read the images and again I'm using the same image I've used in my previous tutorial so I have one image and I manually translated that image in fact let's go ahead and uh, copy and paste this one other line uh, commented line that tells us by how much I manually translated this uh, second image by 17.45 pixels okay so the method one that I'm going to show you again let's uh, uh, first copy if you, this literally one line okay so uh, the method one is uh, part of our from image registration we're going to import chi squared shift okay and the chi squared shift gives you four outputs the errors and the actual offset in X and Y position and a noise is a parameter you need to provide that's an optional parameter go ahead and provide it if you if you want so here in this example, as you can see, uh, uh, in fact, what it actually does is it finds the offset between the two images using the uh, 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 DFT upsampling method. So that's uh, and the output is going to be what we care about is X offset and Y offset. And once you know by how much X is uh, you know, offset and Y is offset, then you can actually go ahead and shift your second image by that much to register it with the first image. So for that, we are going to use uh, a function called shift out of scipy.nd image. And our corrected image is our shift function applied on the offset image. And by how much are we shifting it? By X offset and Y offset. Okay, so that's exactly uh, what we are doing. But let's throw a couple of print statements so we can actually see uh, how accurate you know we actually got our uh, shifts. So let's actually print the original translation: 18.75 in x and 17.45 in y in the negative direction. Which means we need to push our x back by negative 18.75 right of our to correct for our image and then negative 17.45 but let's see what the uh, what the output actually tells us and uh, let me also throw a few uh, uh, print commands or plot commands uh, here so we can actually plot it uh, again these lines again I increase the font size so it looks a bit uh, ugly but uh, these lines are basically formatting to uh, visualize our image or offset image and the corrected image all at the same time that's pretty much it okay so let's go ahead and uh, run this uh, let me go ahead and click the run button over there Okay, so it says the pixels are shifted by negative 18.31, whereas the correct answer is 18.75. So not bad, right? Uh, Subpixel, it can do a little better job, but in from a, uh, down to a pixel level, it did a good job. And 17.23, negative 17.45, right? So this is this is this is very close, and here is our corrected image shifted in the in that specific direction. So this is, uh, and to change this to uh, the next cross correlation based, let me, in fact, let's uh, delete everything and then uh, let me copy the whole thing again so we don't confuse it. So for cross correlation, again, what are we trying to do? We are going to import the right library. We are going to read our images. So this library in this case is cross correlation shifts. 
okay previously it was chi squared and cross correlation shift provide the inputs as our image and offset image okay it's going to output the offset in our x and y this is uh, pretty much it for this and uh, i shouldn't have deleted but let, that's okay let's actually copy all the other print commands and shifting the image back to its original state okay so that's basically these lines so we are printing our offset uh, you know the shifted pixels and uh, we are shifting this again back to our original so let's go ahead and run this so with this, uh, with our uh, cross correlation, this specific image, you know, uh, it's saying 18.38 and original was 18.75, 1725, 17.45. I think it's very similar to this, this result. Okay, we got 18.3, 17.23. Here we got 18.38. So these both are similar. And again, it depends completely on your images. So go ahead and test these two on your specific images, okay? So these two were inspired by this uh, astronomy, guys. Uh, now let me show you another one that actually is, uh, 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 let me actually talk about uh, the optical flow-based shift. So I should have written this down, optical flow-based shift, okay? And uh, there is a dense optical flow, there is a sparse optical flow. I'm going to show you the dense optical flow. What it does is it takes two images and returns a vector field, which means at every pixel, instead of me getting an X offset value and a Y offset value, I'm going to get an X offset value and Y offset value at every pixel position. Okay, so each pixel we could actually move. So that works very well for non-rigid transformation, right? So far, this is a rigid transformation. Okay, so how do we do that? Optical flow-based shift, again, uh, the first few lines of reading the code, uh, you know, reading the image is uh, pretty much the same. Okay, let's go ahead and read our uh, both offset image and the original image. And within the, again, I believe even OpenCV, uh, uh, something of this sort is available but within the scikit image if you don't see this uh, optical flow tv1 in your scikit image go ahead and update your scikit image okay go ahead and pip install scikit image or just do a quick google search on how to update scikit image on your anaconda it's i think pip update uh, scikit image or something pip da uh, dash dash update i rarely update my packages uh, so i don't remember it offhand but i do a quick google search whenever i need it so in in any case within scikit image import registration and as part of registration optical flow is one of these functions optical flow tb uh, l1 and again here you provide your in uh, image and then uh, uh, and uh, your offset image in fact let's go ahead and run it until this point this may be a bit slow because it's going to calculate the vector field at every pixel let's run it okay so now we actually have flow if i open this flow here it's actually a tuple the size of this flow is 2 by 714 by 901 714 by 901 is our image size and these two it actually corresponds for an array for x and an array for y so if i open this you should see there is one for x and there is one for y okay uh, so you have these two uh, now what do we do with that information well the first one uh, corresponds to y i did a bit of research on this so figured out okay the first one corresponds to y and the second one corresponds to x so now let's extract those two values okay let's extract those two uh, values and the way i do that is my flow in x is flow take the second component which is one here right and take the first component and then call it y so all i'm doing is take all pixels in x and y that's okay we are not changing anything and then also take the values uh, from one so this is the vector field in x direction and this is the vector field in y direction by which there is a displacement in in uh, your image now in an ideal world again uh, i do not want to uh, uh, well you can find a way to actually displace your second image at every pixel now uh, to make things a bit easy what i did is uh, mean of all pixels in x and y so i'm just taking uh, i'm calling it x offset and i'm taking the mean of all the pixels in x 
and then y offset is all mean of all the pixels in y because in this case this is a rigid transformation meaning i translated the image and i do not expect any uh, shift at every pixel okay now if we run these lines up to here in fact we already did the optical flow so let's not waste our time doing that one more time now you should see your x offset and y offset okay let's go ahead and print that part out and this part is the same as uh, uh, all the other uh, the parts I showed you earlier which is uh, print out and then uh, readjust the image so let's run these lines uh, of code that we just pasted so we can see I think this is a bit more accurate than all the other approaches so here you can see our pixels are shifted by negative 18.8 it should be 18.75 and 17.45 something it should be 17.45 so optical flow is always a great way and we didn't even do every pixel translation we actually took an average and it actually worked out pretty good okay and uh, so these are the top uh, the three methods i haven't uh, uh, talked about uh, in my previous tutorial and if I just copy and paste the code from my previous tutorial, just to make sure in case you haven't watched it, what I covered there, there I actually covered uh, using uh, cross correlation shift. No, sorry, I may have copied uh, the wrong one here. No, yeah, this is the part. Uh, so I, I, I covered this topic, register translation, okay, as part of scikit image feature. And uh, this also does a great job for subpixel registration. So in case you're curious, let's go ahead and finish this off one more time. So here you can see, it, this is pretty quick compared to uh, optical flow. So if you're concerned about, if you don't care about every pixel uh, vector fields, just go ahead and use this. This actually works great, register translation. So our original translation was 18.75. We got 18.81, 17.45, 17.24, not bad, huh? So now you know four ways of actually doing image registration. Now, if you have thousands of images you want to register, all you need to do is put uh, pick one of these, put it in a uh, uh, in a loop, and then make it register with the previous image. That's it. I'll leave that task for you because I covered doing something of these sorts in the in uh, one of my previous tutorials. I hope you found this to be very useful, and thank you very much for your attention.